Welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss about the concept about constraints in relational database. What do they do? Why are they needed? And how we can use the idea of constraints to ensure high data quality in our database, which in turn means how can constraints help in ensuring non-duplicate records, accurate records, records with high integrity, records which are consistent, data information which is standardized and the data information which is complete. So let's go ahead, look at a scenario and learn about these ideas. All right, so let's look into the, these two data sets. This is the first table which is having information about employees. Each record means a different employee. And let's look at this table which talks about for a given employee the sign in and sign outs. So let's go to Azure Data Studio, create these tables, and insert these data sets. Let's create the employee records table. We have given the attribute names, their data, their, their data types properly. Employee code, last name, first name, gender, employee type, city and state are varchars and age is integer. So we have already defined that. Let's create this. Good. Let's go ahead and try to insert rec these records in this table. Most of them go through, one of them failed. Conversion failed when converting the varchar value 36 to data type int. So this is an error which SQL Server has thrown back to us. Let's look into if there was any data inserted into this table. See, we got all these, uh, all these pieces of information inserted into the into the table but not the last one what happened here it failed because the type of age column is integer and we are trying to insert 36 which is text if you come back this is the problem excel allowed me to enter this wrong information but relational database they do not allow that so that record is not inserted. So this is the first instance where we can see the value which relational databases bring along. Till now we have been doing a lot of analysis uh, but all those have been functions which are either string function, date function or numeric function which we can also find out in Excel. But when it comes to ensuring a high quality data in your database relational databases they help us a lot to ensure that and the first uh, way to do that is to ensure that the data type which we specify is strictly enforced so i am not uh, allowed to insert a wrong or inaccurate data now let's go ahead and uh, execute the second table also create the second table and let's go ahead and insert records all good let's look at the second table it can show all the data so we are good okay now let's go back and uh, look into few more problems we know that every data set should have a primary key so to ensure that no two records are duplicate but what we see is employer code in this case this column it ideally should have been the primary key but it is it is uh, violating the rules first primary key should not cannot be missing right so i cannot have a situation where there is a missing value in employer code if it is the primary key in true sense second it has to be unique let's look at this one these two records are exactly duplicating 
these two records are also duplicating and in these two cases we have uh, two rec two different uh, people right sharing the same id two employees sharing the same employee id this is a consistency problem so we see that this data set this data set uh, should have been having a primary key uh, it is not having the same or this column uh, allows all the uh, mistakes to happen uh, it allows missing values to enter it allows duplicate values to occur right and excel is allowing that similarly if you see in this data set these two records having the same id which should not be allowed to keep the data clean so excel allows that but not relational databases the problem what happened is that we have simply created the tables and the only constraint or rule which is applied is about the data type there are many more rules which can be applied to ensure that wrong records are not entered at all so the first rule is that if you can identify a column which should be the primary key please enforce a primary key constraint and we are looking we we'll look into next how can we add a clause into the create table so that we can introduce the primary key constraint and hence it will not allow any duplicate records to enter uh, let's first make a change here to ensure primary key constraint and the change is to simply mention the keyword primary key next to the attribute which we we want to ensure that it has to be the primary key so we did that with this let's create the table let's create the table and let's insert our first record all good let's insert our second record which is this one oops it failed it says cannot insert the value null into the column does not allow nulls insert fails what happens it now is not going to allow uh, entry of this record because the primary key column which is the employee code is null is missing so it cannot allow primary key the uh, constraint is is in action now so it is not allowing a, a missing value in employee code column similarly let's go ahead and insert the third record and the fourth record no problem let's insert the fifth record which is this one again it is throwing a problem it is saying cannot insert duplicate key the duplicate value is tx1004 so since an entry has been made with this uh, employee code the same employee code can't be used right so i cannot uh, uh, this it is not going to allow entering this record these two records and with the same logic it's not going to allow entering these records as well as these records so as we see it if i go ahead and execute this entire query there are problems thrown every now and then for all the cases where there are duplicate uh, ids uh, we have the uh, errors being thrown and if you see only the correct information the right uh, set of information enters uh, the other record does not enter so the first correct information gets entered into this one so if you see tx1004 1006 is inserted but the point is that uh, only a single record is inserted from that so uh, primary key constraint is in action and hence you cannot insert duplicated records in your table next i also do not want to have a blank value i do not want to have a blank value or missing value in employee type so but in order to ensure or in order to enforce that constraint there is a not null constraint so we can go to employee type and all we have to mention is not null 
So with this constraint, if I try to insert data, even this record, it will not allow to enter. So let me go ahead and drop the table and then recreate the table. All good. And I should be able to insert the first record. No problem. And uh, let's come with the case where employee code is blank. Let's make this uh, employee uh, type is blank. So let's make it as null. And uh, here I have this this record. This one will be under primary key constraint. So let's insert a unique record and let's try to insert this. Again, it is saying that cannot insert the value null into a column employee type column does not allow nulls. So we see another constraint in action, which is the not null constraint. How about that in uh, we want to uh, we, we want to have a case where in case there are missing values in the gender column by default, we would like to have the value male there by default. So I do not want that column to be having any missing value. So if I do not know which is what is the gender of a given employee, by default, we would assume that to be uh, male. So that's another constraint called the default constraint. How can I go ahead and apply that? Let's see. So to add default constraint on the gender column, all we have to do is add the call clause default and mention the default value. So we are going to make these changes. Let's drop the table once again. Table is dropped and now, now we are creating a table with constraints defined by the data types which is already there, the primary key constraint, we are keeping a not null constraint on employee type and we are keeping a default constraint on male which means if I do not know or if I don't enter anything for gender, it should by default pick up as male. That's what is the expected outcome. So let me create this table and now let's go ahead and create the enter the first record. Again, it should go fine. We have the second one here. I am genuinely, I'm, I'm uh, deliberately designing it like I am skipping the gender here. See, I'm skipping the gender. So if I execute this one, it should go ahead and enter the record, but I should be seeing that in the gender column, there should be male. See, I did not enter anything, but in the gender column, it has taken male as the default value. So default constraint is in action. Let's talk about one more constraint, which can help us improve the data quality even further. Suppose since this is a company, they would always require people to join above a legal age. So if we have an employee whose age is in the minor bracket, so if you see this employee is having an age 15, which means this is a minor, cannot join this company. So I cannot have an employee with an age 15. So can I put a constraint here to check that? And that's what is the check constraints. So how to apply a check constraint? We want to apply the check constraint on age. So we go to age and teacher and we put a check keyword and we mention what should be the age limit. So only those records where age is greater than or equal to 18 should be allowed to enter. So again, let's go ahead. Uh, we should be able to insert the first two records seamlessly. Oops, sorry. I need to recreate the table. So let's go ahead, recreate the table and then insert the first record, insert the second record. And now we are about to insert the third record. Let's try to insert the third record. So there's a check constraint applied and the check constraint is not allowing me to enter a, a record 
with age less than 18 right and we can also check on the right hand side we can look at keys there is this primary key pk this is the key id which is created and we look at constraints you see there is a df or default constraint created let me go ahead and just refresh this and when we see it now we have a ck or a check constraint uh, created a default constraint created from beforehand so all these constraints are getting created and these constraints are basically rules which are ensuring that i do not end up end up entering data which is not required now we are going to look at one another but one of the most important constraints uh, which relation, relational databases apply and that ensures the data having a very high integrity so to understand integrity we will have to first understand what happens when for our analysis we need to go beyond a single table till now all the analysis data wrangling data processing data operations aggregation group by windowing everything what we are doing we have been doing in a single table all the information or columns we need has been available in the single table what happens when you need columns from multiple tables so if the question here is that i need to find out by employee type what is the average working hours so for working hours i need to uh, take a difference between sign in and sign out in number of hours and then i'll have to aggregate uh, do an average by employee type but for that i need to have somehow bring these two tables together and we know that in excel if i have to fetch information from uh, a different table we use what you know as vlookup function and vlookup function expects that there needs to be a key column which is being used to refer another table in other words we are, we are saying that two tables from which we are going to fetch information they need to be somehow related and what we see is these two tables are related by employee code the second aspect of pulling out data from a different data set is um, the idea of foreign key or uh, referential integrity constraint let's consider this scenario we know that if a sign of uh, if a sign in sign out has happened there must be an employee who has done it right so uh, if a sign in sign out is happening first of all there need to be an employee code second that empl employee code need to be a valid one which means if i look at this column we have the employee codes which are existing in this table except this one ws1004 this employee code does not exist in this table so how could sign in is happening from an employee who does not even exist in the employee table that's what is called as the integrity problem the data is uh, not having a high integrity and it is important that such ghost records do not end up entering the data and that is where referential integrity constraints come into picture that's also called as the foreign key constraint so next we are going to see how you can add foreign key constraint in your table when you have more than one table involved and you want to ensure that the, your your tables need to have high integrity and you do not end up with a ghost record situation so to demonstrate referential integrity constraints or foreign key constraints let's uh, drop our records table again and uh, let's create it with all the constraints applied and uh, let's insert few valid records i will avoid some of the wrong records let's insert this should be fine uh, let's insert this should be fine let's insert these two should be fine and let's look at what all information we have in this table so you have ca1001 to tx1004 1005 1006 so we have these five employees in our system so when the scan in, uh, sign in and sign out is happening it needs to happen uh, of these employees uh, only so 
let me quickly check if the employee scan table uh, is existing or not okay it's existing uh, let's remove all the data so let's actually drop this table and let's recreate drop this table and uh, let's recreate this and now if you see uh, we are uh, adding the foreign key constraint like this this is how we do it so the attribute against which I want to add a foreign key constraint we mention foreign key and then we mention references this is where the relationship part comes in that which column in uh, which column is this foreign key coming from so since this column is foreign to this table it must be coming from somewhere or it must be related to somewhere so it is now related to the employee code column in employee records which happens to be the primary key of this table right so this constraint should ideally uh, not allow any record where there is no valid employee existing so if i execute the first few records it will work because ca1001 exists uh, let's bring in uh, this one right so first let's execute wherever ca1001 employee has scanned in okay let's create the table first sorry let's create the table with the constraints applied um, let's go ahead and insert the records for ca1001 employee id it should go without a problem and now let's go ahead and execute the case where this employee actually does not exist in the main table employee table and it again throws up uh, the foreign key uh, constraint problem saying that there's a conflict occurred because uh, it is conflicting with the foreign key constraint applied and hence it is not allowing uh, me to enter a record where the employee code does not has a valid employee existing in the employee records table so if i go ahead and execute this it has only allowed this much so if you see these constraints are the tools to ensure that we do not end up inserting bad record in my system and as we saw that excel has no such control but relational databases provide these set of constraints which are very useful in ensuring high data quality which means it ensures that your data does not allow uh, your database does not allow duplicate records it uh, does not allow inaccurate records it does not allow it it ensures high integrity of your system high consistency of the system and by keeping check constraints default constraints we can also uh, tackle the problems of standardization and completeness so these data quality aspects is something relational databases help us and hence the idea of constraints